Hi folks, it's Lindsay Setchell here from HM and the HM International School of Horse and Hoof Care. Now, one of the things that people often say to us is prove it with case studies. People want to see case studies. So today, I thought I would talk to you about a case study that happened not that long ago. Now, one of the problems that we have with case studies is posting them up on Facebook. Everybody wants us to post loads and loads of pictures on Facebook, but these are pictures of animals that belong to owners who might not necessarily want their horse pushed all over the internet. So it's, it's difficult, right? You have to respect owner confidentiality and you also have to respect the fact that this is a hard time. This is a really, really hard time. And if that owner doesn't want their animal put all over the internet, then you're not going to do it. No matter how many times people ask us to do it, we're not going to do it. So I thought today I would, I would talk about a case study on my whiteboard. And this is a case study about a horse called Dolly. Now Dolly, and I'm sorry, you're going to have to put up with my pictures. Now Dolly, here she is. Here's Dolly. Let's, let's see if we can draw Dolly. There she is. <laughs> Oh, oh, there she is. There's Dolly. Oh, sorry, Dolly. I, I, I don't know what I've done to your ears, but there's Dolly. Now, Dolly was a very happy horse. Dolly, incidentally, is not her name because even this, even though this is a true story, I'm going to change the names because I don't want the names to go out there. For confidentiality, we're going to change the names. So this is Dolly and Dolly was a very happy horse. And Dolly had two owners. She had an owner called Jack and an owner called Jill. And they had a daughter called Tilly. And they got Dolly and this was the family horse and Tilly grew up riding Dolly and they absolutely loved Dolly. But at 19 years old, when Dolly re reached the ripe old age of 19 years old, she had an acute attack of laminitis. And this was in just before the new year of 2020, so the new year of 2023, but it was in 2022. So it was just this last, this last new year. Now, unbeknown to Jack and Jill, and Tilly. Dolly had been a chronic laminitic for a very, very long time. However, they didn't notice the fact that Dolly was getting some fat pads, that in fact she had a bit of a crest starting. They didn't realise that Dolly had a few little swellings around her eyes. Now Dolly wasn't particularly overweight. I have to tell you, she wasn't overweight. And, and so it is a bit of a myth when people say it's, it's a really, it's an obese pony or obese horse's disease. No, it isn't. We've seen very thin horses have laminitis. It isn't all about them being overweight. So Dolly had fat pads. She'd also occasionally been a little bit foot sore but not massively, and quite frankly, she ha wasn't ridden anymore. she just kind of retired. She also had quite a few rings in her feet. So there were a few warning signs. She had another friend, she lived with another horse, and they, had, they were in a pr little private yard, there was nobody else, they owned, Jack and Jill owned this place, well actually it was Jack and Jill's mum and dad's place, and they had a lovely little paddock out the back, and they had two little stables. And the thing that kept Dolly going for all the years until she got to 19 was that the routine that Jack and Jill had with Dolly was that they used to bring her in every single night. Her and her friend, her companion horse, they used to bring in every night and they'd go in a stable and they'd have hay every single night. Well, that kind of prolonged this and didn't really make this that obvious until one day, not that I'm suggesting that you should be taking your horses in and sticking them in the stable, but it was because she took, took, took them off the grass, right? That was the thing. It wasn't the fact, she could have just taken them off the grass and stuck them in a yard. It didn't have to be in the box. It was the fact that she was getting them off grass. So, so Dolly had some warning signs. They were all there for people to see, but sadly, because the owners didn't know, 
they weren't aware of the warning signs and it was Dolly, they would got used to it, away they went. Until New Year 2022 and Dolly had an acute attack. She couldn't walk, she was feeling very ill, very poorly and the vets were called. The vets came out and they diagnosed laminitis. Well, they, they took x-rays and they di diagnosed laminitis. And this is what I'm going to draw out for you now. The progress of what happened to Dolly from this time here, New Year 2022, right through to the summer of 2023. This is a good ending, by the way. Dolly is still alive. Dolly is, is very happy and Dolly is still with her companion and Dolly is sound. So just take that to heart, but we've got to go on a journey with Dolly. And this journey we're going to go on isn't necessarily going to be that pleasant for Dolly and for anybody else, but it is a journey. And I think it's an important journey that you need to hear. So let's just rub some of this out now. So we've, we've got Dolly and I'm going to have to draw that all over again. Let's, let's rub all of this out because I need this space to draw the feet. So let's, let's, put, let's put Dolly up here. Let's, let's, let's put her up here. Here she is. Here's Dolly. <laughs> oh, oh dear, Dolly, you're not going to have any ears. Oh, that, it, there she is. There's Dolly. Now, originally she was quite happy. So Dolly had an acute attack. Of laminitis and here's her foot there's the toe okay and oh hello and here's p3 oh dear me sorry about my absolutely crappy drawings and here's p3 this was this was dolly this was dolly's foot when they came and they did x-ray one so they looked at this foot, the vet came along, and this is vet, vet one that came along. Vet one turns up and x-rays the foot and says, oh, we've started to get rotation because P3 is starting to move away from the wall, which we now know doesn't happen, it's articulation, but this case study is going to show you more about that. It's going to, to, to explain more on the articulation of the hoof capsule. So we've got rotation. So what we need to do is we need to lop off the toe. We need to remove this toe. We're not happy with the toe. And this was with Farrier one. This was the friend of Jack and Jill. He'd been Dolly's Farrier for a long time and he knew Dolly very well. And it wasn't his fault that, that, that Dolly went down with laminitis, it was Jack and Jill's, and they had to learn all about that. So they're pretty sad now, that's sad. So Jack and Jill had to learn that the reason that she went down with laminitis was because it was, in fact, their diet and management. It's not their fault, because they didn't know. It only becomes your fault when you do know, then you don't do anything about it. So, Farrier One had known these guys and this was Farrier One's trim. The heels were a little bit too high, but this, at this stage here, we could have turned, if we'd have turned up or if this had been our horse that we'd come to, then we could have sorted this out very, very quickly and in a very, very short period of time, the healing angle would have been coming in and we would have sorted Dolly out and Dolly would have gone off and, and recovered happily. That's what should have happened here right at the very beginning. But that didn't happen because Vet One, not happy with what Farrier One was doing, said, we're not going to do that and I want my farrier. So farrier two turns up because even though these farriers are trained uh, in the same art, if you like, this one here they liked best because vet one liked working with farrier two. So farrier two comes along and he does, starts to do Dolly's feet. Now let's just make sure that we make this more like this. So now Dolly's feet start to change. They start to look a little different to this foot here. So this foot we had quite a big surface area for Dolly to walk around on. Um, 
she she did have some separation but that's fine because that would have just grown out everything was safe we had some good depth under uh, the tip of p3 and all was in a situation where we could have rectified it very very quickly but sadly no so farrier 2 comes along and farrier 2 under the instruction of vet 1 is told to shorten the capsule basically you've got to get rid of this toe and because this toe is not in line with the hoof pastern axis we have to try and make sure it is now the only way that we can do that is by articulating the capsule so what we do is we allow more heel we don't take the heel so the heel is going further and further up and so p3 on the second x-ray started to look like that so the vet one came along and went oh no this this is no good at all this is no good at all what we suspected is going to happen is happening p3 is now rotating through the capsule this is grave this is a grave situation and she mustn't come out of her box incidentally i missed out the whole point that now dolly is now on box rest and was put on box rest from the start here's dolly Oh my god there she is in the on box rest i'm so sorry like i do apologize she's on box rest and she's now been on box rest for 30 days and the industry says that it is a minimum of 28 days that horses need to go on box rest when they are diagnosed with laminitis but generally it's greater than 28 days so there she was she'd been on box rest 38 30 days she'd had uh, drugs so she was on non-steroidal steroidal anti-inflammatories so she was on painkillers there was pain relief um, no major talk about this thing here diet had been discussed with with vet one that that really hadn't been discussed but dolly now has a situation where she looks p3 does look far worse than here but so does the capsule the capsule's got shorter the heels have got higher the toe is now being removed and if you saw our previous lesson on why that causes it problems down here go back and have a look so now vet one says to farrier two right we now need to put on a clog that's what we're going to do we're going to put on a clog so that will now allow Dolly to rock about on that clog so that that might give her some relief because the bony column is not so in a line now. Now we've got P3 going that way, bony column's not quite in alignment, so it's getting more painful. Dolly, who is on box rest, is actually getting more and more pain in her feet. So we've now reduced the area, surface area, to this amount. We did originally have all this for, for Dolly to stand on but now we have reduced the area so this isn't great a little bit later on after another 30 days so we're now doing so we're now at 60 days sorry we're now at 60 days we have another x-ray and at that time the vet said there was two millimeters of depth underneath p3 so it's basically about to penetrate right there it was about to penetrate um the the clog had been removed because she was abscessing so she had big abscesses going on and the reason she was abscessing was because the circulation that runs around here was being compressed by p3 because p3 was in that position it was pushing down on something called the circumflex artery and the dermis and that was starving p3 of its vital blood supply supply now when that happens over a long period of time or a certain period of time you get something called osteonecrosis and that is why where you have bone that is starved of its blood supply its nutrition and it starts to go through bone loss and when this happens we start to see p3 literally disintegrating and that oh weird p3 literally disintegrating and when that happens there is no going back 
There is no going back for an animal that has osteonecrosis because they can't reform the pedal bone. That, I'm afraid, is going towards lights out because there's nothing we can do about it. But sadly, this osteonecrosis is a man-made problem. Because what's happened is that as she has gone from here to here to here, which incidentally, she doesn't have osteonecrosis right here at the moment, she doesn't. But she's just starting to remodel the tip of P3. As we went from here to here to here with a different farrier and a different, and, and, this, and this first vet, what we've done is we have manipulated the hoof capsule and it looks quite different. It looks different on the x-rays. You can clearly see the difference. You can see how the foot is being made smaller and how the heels are all going up. Not just that, you also have the coronary band, which is starting to change until, oops, until it starts to look very much like that. So the coronary band is changing and the heels are changing. So we've gone from this to this, to, to, to more upright, to more upright. And that's the heels that are changing. So this is a big problem. And, and as we've told you before, point of the frog was always still in the same position. Now we've got this situation. We've got Dolly who has been on box rest for 60 days. So Dolly is definitely not very happy now. And, and, and she's been kept away from her companion who did stand around at her stable door for a while and then after a while was like, I'm going to just start wandering around, bringing even more distress to poor old Dolly. So Jack and Jill are very, very unhappy and so is Tilly. They're all very unhappy and so is Jack and Jill's elderly mum and dad. Everybody is unhappy. So we go back to vet one and now we have this situation with the abscess. We've taken the clog off but we've left the clog on the other foot because we can't get the clog off the other foot because Dolly cannot stand on her foot because who would be able to with that going on? So vet one comes along and this has been x-ray two and this has been x-ray three and she comes along and says right that's terrible, which it is, I'll agree. It's appalling. And this apparently has gone this way because it's just lost its attachment because it, it is no longer attached to the lamina. And so therefore it is swung around in the capsule and gone down. And so therefore now we're gonna have to PTS. This horse Dolly, at this stage here, if FET1 had known that actually capsular articulation that causes the change of the angle of P3, she could have gone, ah, at this stage right here, which is what we've done many, many times, come in and gone, mm-hmm, let's change, let's change the diet and the management. Let's really get Jack and Jill and Tilly and her mum and dad to understand all about the diet and the management. We'll do that. And then what we'll do is we'll just watch what happens. We'll get those heels back to the hard soul plane, mother state, mother nature's constants, mother nature's blueprint. We don't guess. Get it down to there and then watch what happens. The toe would just grow out until eventually that toe's completely gone. And what we finally got is Dolly's foot back. But no, that's not what happened. We started to interfere. And what we started to do was take this capsule here and change it until we got to this incredibly grave situation, at which point we were called. We turned up and we looked at this and went, oh dear, we have a big situation. Now, underneath the foot, with this foot here, you couldn't really even see a lamella wedge. Even though it looked odd underneath and there was a bigger gap between the tip of uh, the, the frog and the front of the foot, there was no wedge there. But that was mainly because this was all being removed. So, and all of this had been thinned. 
So we come along and we go, right, Jack and Jill, the most important thing now is that you need to get the diet right. And I said to Jack and Jill, and Jill particularly, I said, don't make a promise to me, make a promise to your horse, that if you change the diet and the management, and you want this horse to live, that you are going to keep her like that for the rest of your, for her days, for the rest of her days, and her companion. Jill agreed, and so did Jack, and so did Tilly, and everybody else. Everybody agreed that that's what was going to happen. And our advice was, stop feeding her any hay that has any rye in it whatsoever. Go to mixed meadow hay. Try as hard as you can to find that mixed meadow hay. Give it to her 24-7-365 and don't let her ever run out of it. It's got to be good quality. It's not got to be poor quality, which is what you're told. Poor quality means dusty, uh, full of spores, something that's old. That's not right. You want good quality, but you want low sugar. You still want all those nutrients in there. You still really, really do want those nutrients in there, but you want low sugar. So that's what you need. You don't want any hard feeds. You don't really want any supplements because Dolly had enough. She had, remember, this little bit of fat pad up here. So she'd been fed far too much. She had hypernutrition because every time that Dolly came into her stable, Dolly was fed a bucket feed, of course, this is many horses are and this was just adding to all her problems so what we do is we say strip it back strip it back to the basics and that basics is the cornerstone of the horse's diet which is hay and hay alone hay 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 and nothing but hay constantly hay water definitely water and definitely a mineral block that they can just lick themselves. No molasses or anything like that. And that's what we said. That's what you need to do. This was a grave situation. And in a situation like this, we have to make a call. We have to go, is this going to be recoverable? Yes, it is, but is it going to be recoverable in this situation? Well, Jack and Jill own their own land, and because of that, they were able to put up a little track and they had a little yard, and all of the things were in the, in the perfect situation for Dolly to get better. So, we said we would help. So, Dolly was not put to sleep, and we opened the box so Dolly could get out. So Dolly was no longer on box rest. However, Dolly, for the first three days, didn't come out of her box. So I actually don't think she realised that the door was open because she just had a bar across. And she didn't come out because she, she wasn't sure she was allowed to. Plus, her foot was hurting, right? And she was abscessing. So what we did was we came along and we did our preliminary trim which is to remove some heel because we need to get the heel down to the hard sole plane. Problem is, in a situation like this, you've got compaction in the back of the foot. It's not that easy to, to, to deal with unless you, you have a professional on your, you know, with you that knows exactly how to read the foot. So, because Dolly's foot needs to do <clears throat> this, all right? This is what Dolly's foot needed to do. So we've gone way past this all the way down here by removing more and more material here. So we come along and we, we, we protect the foot, obviously. We, 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 put, we put padding underneath there and we say to her she can come out. And then over the next few weeks, we are keeping in close contact with the owner, with Jack and Jill, and Dolly is getting better. Dolly starts to improve and till the point where we get to this situation here, Dolly here is, is, is really doing so well. We've got all the videos, Dolly's marching around, she even had a little bit of a trot and even had a little bit of a canter. She's feeling really good. Why? Because we're starting to put P3 in a better position and we're starting to, the, the abscess had stopped, it had stopped producing pus and it had started to heal. Blood supply came back and the bone was being saved. But, and here's a big but. Unfortunately, when you're rehabbing horses like this, you get ugly feet. So here, here bum, 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 bum. let's go here. And this ugly foot here, this is where we have a healing angle coming in. 
which will eventually come down here. But this looks really not very pretty. And, and, and just similarly to Vet1 when she saw this long toe, I said to the owner, my team and I said to the owner, what you need to do, Jack and Jill, is never let anybody see your horse's feet until we are out the other end. Why? Because the industry isn't ready for it. The industry isn't prepared to see it. Unfortunately, a vet did see Dolly's feet because a vet came along with a dentist to sedate the other pony. And Dolly, they tried to get in a, in a uh, box. Dolly didn't want to go in a box last minute. And Dolly, as the vet turned up, shot out of, her, out of her box. And Dolly was fine. Dolly was happy. Dolly had great spirits. Dolly had a little bit of a limp, but not too bad. In, the, in all the years that I've been doing this, I've seen a lot of lameness. And that lameness was not bad at all. She was getting better. She wasn't even really particularly bad at all. It was not even on the realms of a, quite a footy horse. She just had a little bit of a limp because the foot was still repairing. So she came along with the dentist, she saw this and all hell broke loose. All hell broke loose and finally she said to the owner, we can't have this, she needs to be PTS. She needs to be put to sleep. So sadly, what happened, she wasn't put to sleep, but sadly what happened was that Jack and Jill then through went through a huge amount of distress. So did mum and dad and so did Tilly because they'd seen her, their horse get worse and worse and worse and worse and now they were seeing their horse get better and better and better because we were kind of going back that way is what we had to do. Rather than going that way, we had to now take Dolly back this way, back to her foot. And Vet2 turned up with, she came back, this is vet two, and she came back with a veterinary student. And they also came back with an RSPCA inspector. So they came back with one thing in mind, to put Dolly to sleep. Now Dolly was high spirited. I'm sure that the veterinary student, and I certainly know that the RSPCA inspector were a little bit shocked at what they were about to do, because this, pony didn't look quite like the pony they had imagined which was terribly lame and in a lot of pain no 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 she's a little bit lame tiny little bit off that's all she was but vet 2 was determined because they had said that she needed to be put to sleep and it hadn't happened and so she wasn't happy about it and this obviously hadn't wasn't healing because we had this long toe so what ensued over that day was something, frankly, um, I've seen a lot of bad things out there in the equine world, but on this day, in the summer of 2023, I witnessed something that I hope I will never, ever, ever witness again. We'd also brought along our student had come along to help because I couldn't be there because I lived in France. So I was on the phone. But I wasn't talking to the vet on the phone. I was on Jill's phone and Jill just kept the phone open so that I could see everything that was going on. I didn't interfere and I didn't say anything. I left it mainly to our student giving some advice. Dolly had still had a little bit of rotation going on, still not too far out from that, but actually she had depth. We were going back to this scenario here. The heel still had much more to come off but we were due a trim at that point as well. She'd been, she'd been a good uh, five weeks or so. The heel still needed to come down, but the sole depth was increasing. So we were well on our way back to that and beyond. When the vet x-rayed it, she decided that indeed, that did have more sole depth. And she agreed that they let Dolly down. This was a big admission. For this vet here that her practice had let Dolly down um, but even so she felt Dolly needed to go to sleep be put to sleep yet the owners were weeping Jill was saying this isn't right I don't understand why you're saying this because this horse is, is so much better not deterred the vet then said that looking at the x-rays 
it wasn't about p3 anymore she sort of realized that she wasn't on a winner with this one so she then turned to the pastern and she said that the pastern has something called osteopenia osteopenia is loss of bone density and so she said that should molly continue molly was going to end up with a broken leg that's what would happen if 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 she allowed her to live RSPCA expector was feeling a little bit uncomfortable. This was a barefoot lady. She wasn't too, too, too comfortable with this scenario because this pony didn't look that bad. But unfortunately, Vet2 was undeterred. Vet2 did not want to have a discussion with our student particularly. She did start to have a discussion, but after that, she wasn't interested in what she had to say. She was determined this horse was going to be put to sleep. However, our SPCA inspector finally did speak up and said, you need a second opinion. She said she had to do what she wanted. This RSPCA inspector had to do what the vet too wanted and she needed a second uh, opinion. So we did and I paid for vet three to turn up. So vet three turned up. He came along on the same day. Vet 2 was asked to leave the property, but Vet 2 didn't go. She went and sat <coughs> in her car. Here. Here they are, sat in their car, waiting. And while they were sat in their car, they made a phone call for another car to turn up. And this car here was one that you'd be familiar with that tends to have stripes on it and sometimes has a blue flashing light. And of course, that was the police car. So she, Vet2 here, had called the police because she wasn't happy with what was going on. Yet Vet3 turned up. Now Vet3, in this whole silly debacle, he was a senior vet of his own practice. So he was a little bit senior to this vet. He turned up and didn't even spot the osteopenia didn't even mention it. And yet this vet here had said that this osteopenia had been the worst osteopenia she'd seen in her whole 20 years of being a vet. Yet this vet here didn't even mention it and he was a senior vet. However, what then ensued was a situation where he said, I'm not gonna put Dolly down, Dolly can survive, but Dolly has got terrible laminitis. In fact, she didn't. Dolly at this stage had rotation still. It was, uh, we were getting an incredible amount of good sole depth, but what she had was a foot that looked ugly because it was starting to grow out. He wasn't pleased about that. So the police <clears throat> were sent away. Um, this vet didn't really want to leave, but eventually she went and eventually he went and everybody disappeared. And Dolly had a reprieve, but we also had to go. We weren't allowed there anymore because we weren't doing the right thing for that horse and he wanted that toe off. Now, the very worrying thing at that point was, okay, Dolly had survived, but if Dolly was going to have her toe chopped off, all that was gonna happen was that she was gonna go back this way. Luckily, Vet3's new farrier, which was Farrier 3, thought a little bit differently to Farrier 2, not sure about Farrier 1, told Jack and Jill that he'd actually rehab quite a lot of horses and he didn't like bringing the heels up. It was a bad thing to do. And Dolly recovered. Dolly went on to finally have a foot where P3 was in the right position and Vet3 couldn't believe it. Vet3 was amazed. Vet3 still is amazed. Dolly had come off all the medication. She was marching around completely fine. He'd never seen anything like it at all, ever. And there was Dolly recovered completely. All of this, all of this didn't need to happen. It just didn't. This didn't need to happen. And this horse nearly lost her life because of it. It was a mess. And this is the mess that horses are in. And if we could only change education and explain properly to people who want to listen, to people who can critically think that this is happening 
because of the two things. One, we've got laminitis, which is a diet and management problem. And two, the rotation and the movement of P3 is all to do with capsular rotation. P3 is still fixed in its capsule. It is not swinging around in there, losing its connection and just wafting about. It isn't. So the moral of this story is we have a huge amount of misinformation in the equine world, a huge amount of ignorance, a huge amount of false beliefs. And it's sad because millions and millions of dollies have been put to sleep because of it. I hope you enjoyed that story. Dolly is alive and well and very, very happy with Jack and Jill, Tilly and her mum and dad.